What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Community Farm Alliance podcast. I'm your host for the Blackberry series. My name is Vaughn Barnes, and I have with me today another dope guest out of Hardin County, Kentucky. Um, he's real elusive. It's hard to find him. Hard to find him. <laughs> it's Ryan Hodge of Hodge Farm out of Sonora, Kentucky. Ryan, what is good, man? What's going on? It's always good to see you. Always good to talk to you. Um, Ryan Hodge, Hodge Farms. Sonora, Kentucky, as you said, Hardin County. It's kind of, it's kind of tricky how I got started. Um, I've always wanted to do the farming, and I was just scared to take that jump. And I come home one day to six baby ducks in the backyard. So I was like, oh, six baby ducks. And the next day I come home, I had like twelve little baby chicks. And I was like, well, okay, I can do that. But I've always wanted to do much more. Um, and so I end up talking to my best friend, uh, my brother, my, my dog, Travis Cleaver of Cleaver's Family Farming Market. And I was like, you know, every day on the farm with him learning, um, getting that hands-on experience. He's teaching me everything I need to know to try and be successful in it, you know, um, very good teacher. So once he gave me that encouragement and i knew i had somebody there to help me go through it you know and coach me through the hard times the ups and downs you know i kind of took off from there you know so you said you started off with six <laughs> baby ducks how, how did the ducks even get there i come home and my family had some ducks here and they're like we got something for you in the backyard and uh my youngest daughter myra she was the first one that uh met me around front like we got something for you in the backyard, but you can't look yet. And I was like, what is it? You know, knowing kids, what is it? And I go back there and there was six baby ducks that her and uh, my other daughter, my wife, went and got for us. And that pretty much got us started. That was just the excuse for me to go ahead and go full force at it. Oh, so basically they tripped you into, they tripped you into the farming. Well, I've always wanted to do it, but I was scared to make the first step because I didn't know how they would be like ah, eh, you know gotcha. if they would be with it or not you know so i was like i'm kind of scared but once they showed me they was with it i they started a the problem <laughs> now yeah i can tell you yeah after after walking the ground with you a couple of times i i could definitely assure you it, it ain't a problem you you definitely know what you're doing you out there you're doing you're doing what you can i love it Thank um you. i've seen you i've seen you where i initially met you uh what was it it was me me you ashley a black soil mike from kentucky greens um gosh who was the other i know travis yeah. was there it was all at travis's farm it was travis there's another guy in the greens and stuff so it yeah mr lou mr lou yep yeah. um but then, and then that teacher yeah chris thomas and i felt like um like I met you and you was just like, man, yo, look, I got some rabbits for you. I got this, I got that. <laughs> and I and that's when I was like, I was already into rabbits. I'm like, man, who's this dude just giving me all this stuff? Uh, man, I'm about to outdo this dude. Watch. We, you can't just give me everything and I don't get to give you <laughs> nothing back. So what where do you see your where do you see your farm going? My overall goal is uh and what I'm working toward now on this, I'm more into chickens uh than yeah. anything. Yeah. Uh, in the layers um my overall goal by next spring is to have at least 550 layers that's right. my goal is 550 layers and of course uh you know the sheep i like to have me about 10 good ewes and a couple of good rams right, right. that's right. more of what i'm into is the sheep and the chickens more than anything um uh, got a couple cows uh thanks to travis cleaver and he uh blessed me with some baby cows you know to get me started in that area um and also my hogs i can't can't leave my hogs i love my hogs um i've got five mamas right now five good sows uh all of them are with babies right now as well too um so i'm just wanting to keep on growing with these hogs and keep growing with the layers uh, that's my biggest goal is to get a little bit bigger with my layers you know that's my that's my dream 500 layers 550 layers 
I remember the initial time, first time I came out there, met you at Travis's, uh, came back again. Uh, you was out there working Travis's, but you was like, yeah, you know, we're going to go to your spot. And then he was like, my spot ain't as big as Travis's now. Like, it, you, you got spoiled <laughs> going to Travis's. Travis got, you know, a couple, you know, 100 acres or whatever. And then you come to mine's and you had the acre, but you had it all separated and, and sectioned out. And then now, you know, I just returned and you changed it up. Tell me a little bit about how your ground works and the, you know, the section that got the animals on one side and got the pond, the the barn. And then tell me about that. So uh, I wanted to grow a course. And before anything, of course, I started with a dog kennel. That's how I originally started in 1998 with a dog kennel. Right. And then uh, I took that and I invested into a construction company. And then uh, that kind of gave me a little bit of leverage to be able to start with my farming stuff. Right. Um, and I was always telling Travis, I was like, man, and, and my wife was like, man, we need more room. We need more room. And Travis, you know, he's like, man, listen, this is what you need to do. You need to find you a person that's got some land that could use a helping hand, this and that and the other. And you need to try to work a deal out. So I was like, well, who am I going to go to? And just happened, just so happened over the uh, summer, early summer this year, one of my neighbors up here, he was like, uh, man, I've got 11 and a half acres going back there. Do you need to use it? He's like, I was like, well, yeah, sure. What we, we, what we need to do? He's like, you cut my yard, you can have from the pond back. So yeah. every week I go over there. When, now that it's getting cold, it's like every other week I go over when it gets high. Cut his front yard down it takes me about 20 minutes and right. i have a pond 11 and a half acres in a barn that don't cost me anything right so that helped me a lot um because i was able to take my sheep and my cattle and put over there and like i said i'll use up an acre then i'm moving back to the next acre then moving back to the next acre and i just keep rotating it like that and that was a big blessing for me you know to have all of that grass and everything that hadn't been touched in years, you know, just free food from a baby. So I try to take every piece of advice uh, that I can get and I try to capitalize on it and uh, make it work the best I can, but make it also fair for me and the other party involved. So that's how we came about getting the rest of the land. Kentucky Double Dollars, a program of Community Farm Alliance supporting Kentucky farmers and families with over $300,000 in nutrition benefits matched in 2021. For more information or to find a location near you, visit www.kentuckydoubledollars.org. You rotate all the things that you have out there with the electric fencing and you built some staple you know buildings and structures around the property what are those buildings going to be used for right now i'm building a bunch of they're like 12 by 12 buildings um <clears throat> during the winter time they'll be used to uh, house my sheep and my uh the goat that i got from you uh my sheep goat and cattle that will be somewhere to keep them out of the snow keep them out of the sleet and hell the freezing rain things like that so i'll move them from the 11 acres uh back home and that way once i got them home you know i know they got good shelter i can heat them you know i got uh sides to come down so i can put heat lamps in there or whatever it takes to keep them warm throughout the winter and then once spring comes again i'll move the sheep the goats the cattle back to the 11 acres and then I put nesting houses inside of each one of those buildings. And then I turn them into chicken coops for the spring and summer. Everything has to have a multiple use around here. You know, it's one thing I did learn uh, from Travis. You know, he's like, make everything where it could be used for more than one uh, purpose. Now, you always, you mentioned Travis a lot. And I know that he's been a, you know, great mentor for myself, yourself, and a, and a lot of other people. Talk about one of the lessons that you learned from Travis. 
whether it be from i mean just just any lesson any lesson you learn from travis the biggest lesson that i've learned from him was never give up no matter how hard it gets or no matter how hard it looks or no matter what you think it's going to turn out like never give up don't let nothing discourage you uh don't let nothing shut you down or hold you back you know continue to go and go forward so that's one of the biggest lessons that i could say i've learned from him and like i said there's a I didn't know anything about animals. Let's get that straight. I knew nothing about anything, had never been on the tractor, never been around uh, cows in person or hands on with them, you know. So all that was learned from the farm out there. I'm still growing, I'm still learning, you know. Um, every day is a lesson, every day is something new. Uh, I still blow his phone up all the time. Like, hey, man, this is going on. What do I need to do now? <laughs> you know, so to me, it's all about learning and, uh, not getting discouraged uh things don't always turn out the way you expect them to but you can't let that discourage you have to let that encourage you you know it's like okay well if i did it this wrong i messed up how do i turn this mistake into something better you know uh, so that's something that i i do now uh you know i can't do everything that vaughn does i can't do everything that travis does i can't do everything that uh Miss Renee Frey does or Chris Thomas. I can only do what I can do. So that's another thing that, you know, learned that was a learning experience for me because like, oh man, Vaughn got quill. I'm gonna try to do quill. You see what I'm saying? Oh, Vaughn got going, you know. So I can't do everything you do or everything they do. I have to focus on only what I can do, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. I think that was one of the uh funniest things that happened with me uh the time when we was out there. And uh, I was walking and I'm just like, man, oh. you know, you got it in your mind. You think you want a hundred <laughs> acres until you got to walk a hundred acres. Yeah. You don't want hundred acres when you got to walk a hundred acres and, and this is going to be every day. Yeah. Every day. 365, man. That was my goal. Travis asked me when they said, how much land do you want? I said, man, I want about a hundred acres at least. And he was like, all right, come on. So we started at the beginning of where his farm is and by the time we got to that hundred acre i looked at him dead in his eyes i said man i think i'm good with about 10 15. that <laughs> never went down drastically man like that's a that's a lot of it's a lot of land to carry right there it's a lot and another thing is like and i've learned this from not only him but from you as well if you remember when i went to your house uh first time i ever seen your spot and for a person to see your yard from the outside, they would not believe like how much you have going on back there. I'm like, whoa, I'm like, this dude got everything that most people would have to fit on like 10 acres, perfectly fit like a maze, like a puzzle back here. So that right there, you know, that's another sign. Like you don't have to have that hundred acres, you know, if you know how to utilize what you have now. So. Right. That was, um, that was definitely yeah. something that, uh, and I say, I'll pick that up. I picked that up um, from something I seen on YouTube. Then I went to somebody else's farm in the area. And I was just thinking to myself, like, you know, maybe if I had like two acres, this is what I would do. And then I went to their house and I seen what they had. I said, oh, OK, they just did this and this with the fence. I bet when I get home, I know how to set mines up. And then I set it up. I was like, all right, well, now I just got to make sure these don't mess with these. And there's some type of gate between there. And then I did that. Um, and then to take take that, what you just said in consideration, and the last time I seen the property, I said, okay, you don't put, you don't put some, some, some work into, you know, the buildings on this side mm -hmm. and the birds over here and the way that you walk into the birds where the ducks are and the chickens are separate from the ducks. The ducks still got their own water and it's not too much and it don't get too messy and it's still nice and smooth and it's warm where they at i said man yeah right ryan, ryan working now he's he's got it working he got it working in in, in it's systematic because that's also another thing it has to be systematic to where yes. it's functional and it's easy to just be able to get in get out make sure they all fed they got space they comfortable they clean yeah and that's, 
that's the thing. You gotta like everything that I've learned, like I said, learned from out there is it has to be simple, you know, because if you're doing it by yourself, to like you know, if you're out there feeding by yourself today, you don't want to be going way over here to feed, way back there to feed, way over there, then way up here, way, you know. You want to be able to go and bang, 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 knock everything out, make it as simple as possible, uh, in and out and smooth. You know, and you want it to be where uh, you can see everything, know if there's any issues going on, any problems uh, and things like that. And I try to make everything as easy, not only for me, but for my family as well, because like uh, if I'm down or I can't get out, I want them to be able to go out there and not have to walk all over the earth to, you know, take care of stuff. So. Farmers Market Support Program Services. Did you know that a program like this exists in the state of Kentucky? If your market has been around for a while, or maybe you are a new and existing market, we offer marketing development. We also offer business development. We want to offer programs as such like capital support to support your market managers. There's a cost share program. We can establish your market with the SNAP EBT program. And lastly, we provide networking. For more information, please contact us at cfaky.org forward slash FMSP. Again, that is cfaky.org forward slash FMSP. Is there any lessons that you um learned from a mistake that you care to share um at your property? I've made a lot of mistakes, buddy. Um I did learn that water and chickens don't mix too good. Uh, <laughs> um so I was, you know, like I said, just starting off and a lot of times when we start off, we think if somebody tell you, hey, man, you need to do it this way, you'd be like, well, man, all right, well, I'm going to do it this way because this way just seems better. You see what I'm saying? And then when it's too late, you'd be like, oh, so now I see why they said I needed to do it this way. So uh, I had about, I don't know, about 800 baby chicks back there. And the last, I guess it's been about four or five months ago, we had some tornado. Where we live at, we actually had a tornado hit. Hardin County, LaRue County, Hart County, Grayson County. Oh, and we're right in the center of all of them. Like we're within five miles of each one of these places. And we had all this rain and wind and stuff coming and me not listening. Uh, like oh, it seems better like this. Had a lot of my baby chicks out in uh, little structures that I built in the yard. And yeah. let's just say that the next day after the storm, the water had took out all except for like a hundred birds so that was a big blow right there and it, it hurt because it's like man like that's discouraging you know and it hurt me a lot so now i know you know i always make everything up high so if the water is going to raise two or three inches they've still got plenty of leverage you know um, so that was a big lesson for me and also uh moving them daily was something else that I had to start working on and put more time in them. It's more than just going out there, throwing some feet, throwing some water and leaving. You know, you actually have to spend time with them. Uh, you have to check everything daily. Uh, just got to show that care. You got to, you know, you got to show that care. They can't care for themselves. So um, with my sheep, that's, I think my sheep are probably like my, I guess you out of my farm, man, I think you say the sheep are probably like my closest babies to me. Um, because like when you go to them, they're kind of like a puppy, they come running to you, you know, running to me. And uh, it's just a different bond. I have I have a different bond with each animal. You know, my chickens, I go in there, they fly up on me. I, they carry my hand, they walk around on my shoulders. But my sheep are kind of like puppies to me, you know. And so it's just, I just love all my animals, man. I do. I love them. Yeah, I do want to ask about that one. Um, 
the, the little white banny what what's up with that one why is it like why is it different <laughs> she um i put her with the rest of with, with my older group of chickens uh in hands rather and uh for some reason out of all of the ones that's in there she's the only one that can always find an escape route and so every day i go out there every morning go down there she's loose put her back in there about one o'clock she's out again you put her back in there come six o'clock i said so you know what forget it just let her do what she do but she's not she'll come straight to me i'll go down there i pick her up and she'll sit right here you know she'll sit on my shoulder and i can walk around and feed and she'll ride with me you know and she's uh she's like a pet for real like uh i missed her i guess it's been about two months ago she come up missing i was thinking something had got a hold to her so my little heart was saddened, so to speak. And I was like, man, it's my baby, man. She's gone. And I was pouting like a little kid. And I was over at the barn and I heard something. I was like, what is that? And I kept hearing like a chirping sound. And so I went into the barn and I couldn't find it. And finally over in the corner was an old wheelbarrow filled with old boxes and paper and stuff. Yeah. Well, she had built a nest in there and hatched some uh, baby chicks. And, oh wow! And I was like, "Wow!" You know, like I was just like a rejoiceful day where I was so happy to find my baby again. You know, <laughs> and uh, so I took her and my babies and I put them in my tool shed inside of a uh, pen that I built in there for them. And I kept them in there for the last two months. And I finally put her back out, put them with the other chicks that we incubated. And but yeah, that little bandy, she's that's my baby, man. That's that's my baby. Well, does she have a name? I don't. I just call her baby girl. Like, come on, baby girl. And, and she'll come and I'll put her up there and she'll just ride with me, you know, and she just thrusts the yard like she owns the yard. And at nighttime, she she goes over to the goat that uh, I got from you. And she'll flop. She'll go over there in the daytime. She'll lay with them. I'll throw some little uh, feed out there. She'll eat with them. And then at nighttime, she'll jump up in that tree and she'll roost up her in that tree all night. Then next morning, I go to now, she's walking around waiting to get fed. That's my baby. Did you know that CFA is a nonprofit organization that supports family farms, equity work? food access, and policy work across Kentucky? If you're interested in supporting any of this work, please go to cfaky.org and go to our Donate tab in order to donate or become a member today. We really appreciate any and all help that we get, and it goes back to helping both farmers and consumers across the Bluegrass State. For more information, go to www c-f-a-k-y dot o-r-g once again that's www dot c-f-a-k-y dot org thank you and now back to our show what about the animals because you, you you do have a lot of them what about the animals that you appreciate um for your farm what what is it what's the appreciation where did that come from I guess the biggest appreciation to me to the animals is that, like you said, the animals themselves take care of my family. You know, um, we take care of them. They take care of us. You right? You know, you, you take care of that cow. Eventually, that cow feeds your family. You raise those chickens. Those eggs feed your family. Same thing with the, you know, the sheep and the ducks and everything else. Um, also, they are, of course, you know, like with the sheep and the goat, the cows. They help keep your land clean. They help keep everything up, you know, with your grass, your weeds, things like that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate them just as much as appreciate me. You know, like I said, without them, I couldn't feed my family. Because uh, it, it, you do got a lot of mouths over there to feed. And uh, you got to protect them. Yes. That, that, that leads me to ask you, what kind of predators do you have out there in Sonora? When we first moved to about... Four years ago, uh, when we first got this home here, we had coyote problems. Of course, that was before the farm animals and stuff had come around. 
and they would come up in the yard at nighttime howling and they'd come close and so the kids were scared to be outside but like i said i started with breeding dogs back in 98. i started putting them lining them up around the perimeter of the side of the yard the back of the yard so a coyote actually did come into the yard one day and the dogs did what they're supposed to do and we've not had a, <laughs> uh, we've not had a problem since let's just say that and we still don't have them now you know they don't even come as far as when we run them sheep back through there the coyotes don't even come up that close to us no more so they learned it was a, one hit of quitters and Mike Tyson punched to him. So, but, <laughs> so we really don't have no predators now. There's two females back there that are really protective of the yard and the the family. Yeah. And that would be uh, my baby girl, Black China, and then my oldest uh, dog on the yard, which is Fancy. Uh, and then on the boy side, Omega, he holds the crown now. Uh, that's my that's my boy. He's the one that no matter what the what it is, he's gonna do whatever he gotta do to make sure that you're safe, I'm safe, we're safe. You know, he's he's the man of the yard right now. You know? Yeah. He sure is. I don't think anybody's gonna come up there trying to mess with people <laughs> in your backyard for, <laughs> for and that's real. the that's the that's the biggest thing, you know, living way out in the country. Uh which you've been here before, you know, there's no street lights out here. There's no nothing out here but just darkness and woods so uh, having teenage girls and you know things like that and my god baby uh she comes over a lot i want something that's going to protect them as well you know and that's right. what my dogs come in now is they're my family protectors as well as uh protecting my livestock they definitely <laughs> run the farm outside of yourself in the family they make sure everything is on the tip top, <laughs> tip top, <laughs> great shade. <laughs> tip top, great. They're my babies. Man, why, why are your animals called your babies? Because my animals are my family. <clears throat> and one thing about it is, an animal never, uh, animal never do you wrong, so to speak, in my eyes. You know, it's the reason why they say a dog is a man's best friend. Uh, yeah. I've got a couple of kittens back there. One cat, she's older. She actually just decided to move her from a neighbor's farm and been her three years now. And they're like, well, you might as well keep her. She won't come home. But those animals, you know, when you go out there with them, you just feel them love. You know, they love you. They're happy. They jump and they're happy. You know, they're just, they're like babies. They're like your kids, you know. So you treat them like your kids, you treat them good, you take care of them, you walk them, you exercise them, you play with them, you love on them, they love on you. And any animal that's on the yard, I don't just treat them like, um, even if I know this cow's gonna go to the butcher, while he's on this yard, he gonna be my baby. You know, <laughs> so I just try, to, just try to take care of all of them and just have that passion, you know, because Farming has always been something I wanted to do. And it's something that not only do I want to do it, but I want to be able to do it right. right. And I want to, and you so many times, you know, you ride past uh, farms and you can just be like, I've been bringing up Travis again. I've been rode with him several different places. Like he's been places I've never heard of before. And I've ride with him and we'll be riding and we'll look at a farm. We both like the metal. So we'll be like, oh, what they got going on over there? And then he'll shoot out, he'd be like, that cow needs some groceries right there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> something like that. And so I want to always, you know, and we just cut up a lot. And, but when you go out there, like I can go out there in that backyard and over in that field and I can just be there all day. You know, I can just sit there and just go in the cages with my ducks or my chickens or the hogs or the sheep and the goat. And I can just be at peace you know that's like my little piece of heaven on earth right there uh when i go to the farm it's heaven on earth you know what i mean uh, because it's never like work or uh, anything like that it's just being able to live your dream out is what it is to me and for me to be able to live my dream this is how i'm doing it. so you had mentioned one time we was talking you said this uh 
He said, man, I can't wait until it's the winter time because that's when the farming really start. Yeah. I'm like, well, isn't that when the season end? And then you said, no. And then you went off into why. Talk a little bit about that for the people that are listening and watching. What do you uh, mean about farming starting <laughs> in the winter time? I know it's kind of weird. Like during the, so you know, like Clay's family farm market, they do a lot of vegetables and things like that. So during the spring and summer, you know, they're going 18 to 20 weeks going hard with vegetables and things like that. And I'm not a vegetable guy, so I don't really know much in that area. But once the vegetable season's over, it's like, man, it's time to, you know, be out there with these babies every day and do this and do that. And uh, it gives me like, if you can get an animal through the winter, Cause the winter usually is like the hardest time to get them through. Right, right, that's right. The, that's when I learned the most. That's when the classes begin. If you can pull them through the winter, then you have an easy spring and an easy summer. And so when I'm out there, you know, winter time is ninety nine percent of the time. It's just uh, me and Travis out there. You know, so we're frozen together. We're wet together, and. I'm full of questions when I'm out there, like, well, why does this happen like this? Or what do we need to do here? Or how do we do it? You know, so, and that's when I get a lot of my learning. And the thing about him is he always makes sure that he tells you everything you need to know to keep you from failing. Now, if you don't listen to it and you do something else, it's on you. But I've learned, you know, get them through the winter. You have a good summer. My first winter was rough uh, because I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but this summer and last winter was a lot easier for me. You know, I learned about how to properly um, insulate the chicken coops. You know, so I, uh, I learned how to properly insulate stalls and things for my uh, hogs and the baby hogs, for my ducks, for, you know, for everything. Uh, so now it's like I'm better this year than I was last year. And I was better last year than I was two years ago. So each year I'm learning and I'm getting better at it. But you said you're not a vegetable guy, but you know, I got video footage of, I mean, it's not you, but it's your daughter out there. What is that patch? What is that stuff growing out there? It's a uh, greens. Um, I try to do something small each year, like uh, greens, uh, tomatoes. Cause I like to eat tomatoes, onions, greens, potatoes, things like that. So I grow a small, small, maybe, I think this section is like a 10 by eight. And then I got another section that's like a 12 by 10 that I grow tomatoes in and onions, potatoes, things like that. Just enough uh, for us uh, in, in our household. The personal uh, stash. Yeah, personal stash. And plus I like greens. So, you know, also with the greens, um, like with my rabbits, my ducks, my chickens, I can go out there and take a handful of those and it also feeds my chicken and my ducks and uh, my hedgehogs. You know, we got hedgehogs. They can eat the eat it too. The bearded dragons, they can eat it as well. Um, so it's, again, another multi-use thing. <laughs> what, what is the hedgehog? What's that for? <clears throat> They're just just pets. Is all it is. Um, and actually, I bought one. I guess it's been about a year, a little over a year ago. I bought a female from a pet store in Louisville, and I got home. And then I think it's like three weeks later, we found out that she had had babies. So she had like three or four babies back there, and then we kept a couple. Next thing you know, we they started breeding. Like, oh Lord, so. That became another little side hustle for us as well. Um, I never knew how big the hedgehog market was until then. You know, mm. A lot of people buy the hedgehogs. So I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe it ain't too bad. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know y'all was in the hedgehogs. I'm not. They are. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, they got the hedgehogs and the bearded dragons. I've got everything outside. So. I can feel it. I feel it. I feel it. So, you know, we coming up on that time. This is the Blackberry series. I got to ask the question because I always do. 
what berry best represents Hodge Farm? I would say probably the blackberry. And uh, that's because, you know, blackberries can pretty much grow anywhere. You know, so no matter how rough the soil is or how whatever the condition of it is, a blackberry can grow pretty much anywhere. And that's something that kind of also encourages me, you know, like to have what I have now and to grow where I've grown at and to be able to go where I'm going. You know, it's kind of like that blackberry, you know, you can grow anywhere. And I'm proof of that, you know. You don't have to have uh, alfalfa grass or a big, big, huge 200 acre farm, nothing like that. If you just listen and you, if you really want to do it, and you know that from your own, or if right. you want to do it, you can do it wherever you are. Uh, no matter how hard it is, no matter what the condition is, you can do it just like that blackberry, no matter what kind of ground it's on, it can still grow. Right. So, and that's where we are. We're still growing and we're going to grow even bigger. So. Now, you out there. Um, so I got to say, because, you know, that's what I think. But you out there in the middle of the sticks, man. <laughs> and y'all always have the almonds rolling by on horse and buggy. What is that like for you out there? Like, how do y'all? How do y'all make that happen? Because you can't just bend corners and drop fast out there, man. What what is that like? It's 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 pretty neat. It's a pretty neat experience. Um, because also, you know, we try to uh barter and do deals with the Amish. You know, there's been times where I'd be like, Hey, look, I'm gonna give you three of these meat birds and you give me two gallons of that fresh milk off a cow up there, you know. Um, and there's been times where I also have a construction company uh, where we model houses and things. And so there's been times where uh, the Amish that came to me like, hey, look, we're looking for some work. And that's good help right there. You know, so they don't help do a lot of jobs for me, uh, whether it's on the farm or at my house or other jobs that I've got. And <clears throat> just being around, you know, it'll teach you to humble yourself because when you see, you know, we complain about a lot of things, but you see these people, they living without electric, they living without running water, um, they're living without cars and trucks and track, you know, things like that. So it's like they're thriving hey. still. Yeah, and they still thrive and they're still doing their thing. So it's like, who am I to complain? You know, how can I say, well, man, I don't have a tiller when I go up there and they're out there with hoes and stuff like that, you know, digging and raking. So I can do that. Um, or if I say, well, I don't have a tractor to cut hay and I go up the road there and they've got horses out there or they've got their kids out there with sickles chopping the weeds down by hand and then just bagging it up, you know? So it's just, huh. it's a humbling experience, you know, it let you know, and it's pretty neat to see their lifestyle compared to our lifestyle and to just be able to interact with them on occasions. So it's, it's pretty neat. And I like being around uh, different things like that, so to speak. All right. Well, you know, we've come to the end. I'd like to say thank you very much for coming out here. Everybody, thank you all for listening. It's another episode of the Blackberry series of Community Farm Alliance podcast. And I always close with real change comes from the ground up. Until next time. Peace. See you, man. Nice talking to you. Out of here.